Hello, this is John with Theology Ed. We're going to try something new today. Um, we're working on the white noise series, and we were, we're already, I think, three full parts in, and there's more to come. However, I'm going to sort of take a, I don't know, a little detour, and we're going to go back and do an analysis of the trailer, given what we know about the film as well. It helps us to uh, understand what's being communicated in the trailer. Now, I've looked around on YouTube, and I've seen other reactors. I, not, I'm not a reactor, but we've seen. Re, I've seen reactor channels watch the entire trailer from start to finish without interruption. Uh, and supposedly they're not getting copyright um, infringed, you know, get strikes or whatever. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and just give it a shot, and we'll see what happens here. Um, I'm going to show it. I'm, I'm going to be pausing, uh, but then I'll talk about it as I go, and let you know what I think. Uh, so white noise, as we've seen already in the series, uh, white noise here, um, that is a way to refer to death in the film. Of course, white noise, we're familiar with it. It's that, you know, sort of noise in your environment that uh, we often ignore, associated with something like a static, static sound on a TV or just all the little mundane sounds that are uh, happening all the time. Okay, and... Jack, in the film, makes this comment about, you know, what if death is just noise? And Murray says, you know, I forgot the exact phrasing, but he says white noise, you know, it gets to the point of white noise. And the idea is that we're looking at a film about death. And that's really what it comes down to. And what the people are doing in the film is they're trying to avoid the fear. Uh, it's sort of avoid the fear of death, escape the fear of death, and not think about death and ignore it. And what the film is saying, uh, in what I'll call the allegorical meaning, um, is that that's a big mistake because that's dangerous. Uh, and we'll see that even in the trailer. Now, let's go ahead. I'm going to hit play. We'll see that it starts in, in a black screen heading towards a little crescent moon-like light. Now, it's actually the end of a tunnel. The train is coming out of a tunnel, um, and it's giving the appearance of the end of an eclipse. Like, after an eclipse, you get this collision. Okay, and we're going to see uh, what that means. Let's go ahead, hit play here. All right. Okay, so right there, we've already seen, at the beginning, very clear eclipse symbolism. We're getting the, as the eclipse is ending, we're seeing the threats, like it's coming, the impending doom, the things that are on their way, um, the flashes, okay? And then immediately after that, his uh, wife's daughter, Denise, I think if I remember correctly, she leans over, eclipses the light. It looks, you know, perfectly circular light, uh, like a uh, solar eclipse. She's going to eclipse this uh, and tell him, get up. We have no minutes left. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Jack, wake up. We have to leave. Five more minutes. No more minutes. Okay, five more minutes. No more minutes. So after that eclipse, with that eclipse, no more minutes. Now let's keep going. Okay, roll film. Would you like that protein? That stuff. Right here, we have the carefree scene. She's, she's looking at gum. Viewers are going to look at that as gum. But what she's, this is, you know, carefully selected brand of gum, a carefully selected brand of gum, carefree. And it's the attempt to remain carefree and to live a carefree life in the midst of everything that's going on right now that's actually very dangerous, as we'll see here. Causes cancer in laboratory animals, in case you didn't know. Either I chew gum or I smoke. What are these children? Okay, let's go back. Okay, roll film. Stuff causes cancer in laboratory animals, in case you didn't know. Either I chew gum or I smoke. What are these children, yours? That's mine from wives one and three. There's Babette's from husband two. Wilder is ours. We're each other's fourth. Okay, pay careful attention to the numbers. I'm not sure what the significance of them are, of the, of the numbers 
uh, is, the significance is. Uh, however, if you listen to the order, it is one, three. Oh, is yours? That's mine from wives one, one and three. And there's so there's one and three. Babettes from husband two. Wife from two. Elder is ours. We're each other's fourth. So one, three, two, four. Possible. You know, if you're looking for dates, uh, you could have January 3rd, 2024, or you could have March 1st, 2024, or it could be something completely different than a date, okay? Um, but let's just keep going. Life is good, Jack. I hope it lasts forever. Let's watch a sitcom or something. Okay, watch that scene again. What is happening here? We're getting the life is good, Jack. I hope it lasts forever. And immediately, what do we get? That they are confronted with the fact that it isn't going to last forever. And what's going to be their doom in the trailer? Whatever is represented, whatever is represented by this train crash event we know from the film itself is pointing indirectly to the war in palestine in the middle east that began in october 2023 um, if you want to see the explanation of that go ahead and look at part two of the series however the idea is the train crash here is pointing to the middle east war okay um so we're going to have she wants life to last you know, Life is good. Forever, Jack. it lasts. It's good. I hope it lasts forever. Let's watch a sitcom or something. No! They're calling it the airborne toxic event. We won't come this way. Will we have to leave our home? Of course not. I okay. Now, if the airborne toxic event is pointing to something in the Middle East, which is what comes with this war, or what comes after the war, um, as, a, as a consequence of the war, uh, the optimism of the Americans here uh, is that it won't come this way. It won't affect us. Let's turn on a sitcom rather than watch this on the news, right? This sort of thing. It's let's avoid uh, this reality. Let's be carefree. And that's what's dangerous, okay? So he's going to, every time he affirms, oh, we're fine, it turns out he's not. So if we go back to see. We won't come this way. Will we have to leave our home? Of course not. How do you know? I just know. Okay, what if it's dangerous? Evacuate all places of residence. So this is the end, or near to the end. Let's say goodbye. We have a situation. All we have to do is stay out of the way. They're passing this, Dad. Technically, that's illegal. <laughs> okay, so we saw at the table, uh, we're, we're not going to have to leave our house. It's not a big deal. The, the airborne task event's going to go a different way. And it didn't. It ended up coming right to their area. They had to evacuate the house. Every time he's giving an assurance, it looks like he's wrong. You know, this carefree approach at this point is dangerous. Okay. And it's dangerous enough at that scene, we know from the from the film itself, this is when he's going to be talking to the Simu Simvac or whatever it is, uh, worker for the government who is helping with the evacuation but also simulating a future event. Um, that uh, not only was his carefree attitude not harmless, what happened? He had been exposed to the airborne toxic event and now has a quote unquote death sentence. Uh, so. Do sheep have lashes? Ask your father. We're going sideways. Dad, do sheep have lashes? Doesn't anyone want to pay attention to what's actually happening? That there is a line that is explicitly one of the themes of the film, right? It is. Uh, one of the underlying themes. It's people are trying to avoid the inevitable catastrophe coming. Doesn't anybody want to pay attention? They're literally, you know, floating along, being carried along by a river. Um, 
<laughs> and, and they're talking about totally different things, trying to ignore what's going on. I wish there was something I could do. I wish I could outthink the problem. There are two kinds of... Again, did you see that? I wish there was something I could do to outthink the problem. And he tried to do something clever. Could do? I wish I could outthink the problem. He tried to do something clever. He drives through this cornfield. He escapes that long way, goes through the river. And where does he end up? Did he escape the problem? There are two kinds of... He didn't escape the problem. He's right there in the line with everybody else. There are two kinds of people in the world. Killers and dyers. There are two types of people in the world, killers and dyers. But watch when he says killers where he's at. People in the world. Killers. Okay. This is the, if you want to think of it this way, he's looking like a killer looking through the eclipse. Now, from the film we know on the outside, we actually have a ring of light here. And he looks through, and he looks at the keys. And the key to understanding what's going on here is the missing four and the missing eight, which is the date of the 2024 um North American eclipse, uh, next great American eclipse, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so he's this is the killer eclipse, perhaps. In dyers, most of us are dyers. Now watch this scene. Very, very interesting. We have we have analyzed on the channel a lot uh, the fact that there are the five eclipses, the main major eclipses that are important for them between 2017, August 2017, and April 2024. Uh, and one of the symbols associated with it is that uh, heliophant O symbol, which is the circle or the eclipse symbol with a light or a dot uh, to the side, basically like the Instagram uh, logo, okay, uh, which uh, comes up over and over and over again in predictive programming and Heliophants and Donnie Darko and You Should Have Left and many, many other places. Candyman, lots of places. You've seen it on my channel a lot. So watch what he's... We're going to get that symbol. Now see, he's putting his glasses up to get the eclipse here. Here's be your eclipse side and there's your light to the side at the angle. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. So we get the symbolism of five eclipses even... This being selected to have your ring of fire or your your uh, uh, corona around uh, showing around the black hole sun, okay, to give you the impression we're looking at five eclipses being symbolized here. Watch there, we get the symbol. five consecutive eclipses, and then what do you get after that? Boom. Okay, so what we have fascinatingly is that these are the five. Uh, eclipse is being represented by their, uh, you know, their, their one after another opening of the bags. And right around midway, interestingly, is when in the film itself we get to uh, the crush and those brands that eventually leads to high C, which represents or stands for, I believe, well, either could stand for, some people point out, could stand for high C, S, E, A, like a some sort of a tsunami or some event in the uh, that, that comes from weapons um, or submarines or whatever. Like the Russian sub uh, allegedly is going to do this. And, you know, regardless uh, of who you think would do it or does it, um, the idea is that some people think there's a legitimate tsunami threat and there's predictive programming very clearly about tsunamis. Uh, another possibility, uh, which I think is also relevant maybe even the same has this overlapping significance is high c of course in, in military signifies high intensity conflict which is the direction we're going um, now step back watch that again and you see the explosion there and then this is jack who is a Hitler studies professor giving a talk about Hitler here and uh, emphasizing this death coming um, and what we're all afraid of and what we're all uh, concerned with, how crowds come together in the name of death. Okay, that's this is where we're at. Wait, no, we're safe. Okay. 
right now we're safe. And at that point, right, right when we say that, we're saying in the dance scene where we are getting evidence of the dance about war, okay, at the end of the film. Right now we're safe. As long as the children. Okay. Right now we're safe. And do the visuals show safety? This is the butcher in the Persian bazaar. And the, the slaw, you know, cutting a rib off and the blood getting on the face of uh, one of the clients. Dave, as long as the children are here, they need us. For some persistent sense of large-scale ruin, we keep inventing hope. There's a persist persistent sense of large-scale ruin coming, and we're just inventing hope. Hope, as if the hope itself is unfounded. Uh, but we're doing it, like throughout this film, uh, in a way to cope with the uh, fear and the inevitable uh, catastrophe coming. Now, that seems to be the trailer. The trailer is saying uh, this war coming. You're going, a lot of people are just going to sort of ignore it over in the West. Like it's not coming their way, it's not going to affect them. Uh, there's going to be no impact. And as it turns out, um, they're going to have to, things are going to affect them. And that's where this event eventually leads to sort of the uh, Hitlerization, uh, because of the Hitler studies element, uh, of the West. Uh, we even get warnings in the film against going where the government tells you to evacuate, you'll be allowed to leave. Uh, we'll see in probably the next part, or a part coming up soon, uh, that uh, Babette advises you that if you think somebody's a kidnapper, uh, they probably are. Okay, uh, so there's there's real threats, real warnings about this, um, and and that's where we're headed in this in the trailer. What I think is being told. So, like, subscribe, share, take care, blessings.